Hello. I am doing some last second dishes here. I will be with you in just a right now because I'm going to keep talking while I'm doing this, but you'll see my face once these are rinsed. Dishes from the... I'm not going to lie. Dishes from the week. I've had a stressful week and I've let things get away from me. Um... <laughs> Nothing left from our Monday show, but certainly some things from in between. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, oop, that is not my face. That's my face. Hi. Um, this week has been a time. <laughs> I have not had a great time with it. I'm going to say that. So we're making a comfort food thing to make myself feel better. And also because I want to do a show. I need to do another show this week. Um, I found this. It is not dated today for a change. We have time on it, but I'm going to use it today regardless. Um, that's ground lamb, Australian lamb. Um, kind of an odd find for me. Uh, Australia is literally the other side of the world. Uh, but, okay, whatever, I guess. Uh, yeah. And we should probably get going. And I can just chit-chat while I'm getting started on things. Uh, we're going to need the grater, so I left that out. Oh... Boy. So uh, we're making today ragu di agnello, which is Italian words that I think means lamb sauce. Um, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't speak Italian and I didn't look it up. But it's going to start us off with a sofrito. It's actually going to start us off with the lamb itself. So it wants me to take it. I've got a recipe pulled up from from inside the rustic kitchen .com. And we're going to we're going to follow their direction, their first thing. Um, and then I'm going to make a change to the very first step. Uh, we are getting out the big Dutch oven for this. Um, but the very first thing it says is put olive oil in your pan. And we're not going to do that. Because it, <laughs> it has us olive oil the pan. And then it has us saute the, the meat in the olive oil. And then it has us remove excess fat from the pan. Because lamb tends to be very fatty. Um, and I'm just going to not add the extra fat from the olive oil to this pan. And instead we're going to just let the lamb fat render out so we aren't wasting ingredients. That seems like a waste of ingredients to me, personally. Um... And I'm not going to wait for the thing to heat up. We are just going to plunk it in there as is. Let it heat up with the pan. It's going to cook for a while regardless. We are going to take into taking it out, but then I'm just going to use the rendered lamb fat to do our vegetables. Um, and I'm making changes along the way. Because we're not spending four hours slowly simmering out a sauce we're spending at most two hours quickly simmering out a sauce um, so while that is getting started we will come back over here um, and i will start cutting up the parts of my sofrito uh,
Ooh, I need, bear with me a sec, I need that rubber band that we had on the cutting board. Someday we'll get a new cutting board. In the meantime, if your cutting board does that, Putting a little rubber band, like the kind that come with your vegetables, that's where I get mine, um, so they're free with with vegetables, even on just one side, but it's even better if you could on both sides. Just keep your cutting board from sliding around. Um, keep them out as far as you can get them so that you aren't running into them with your knives. If you're too warped, this probably won't work. But if it's just a little bit of a warp, and then I uh, don't slide around. Um, so frito is essentially the same thing as a mirepoix, if you're familiar with French. I've talked about this many times before. But it's less fussy, and it usually includes garlic. And it also... doesn't need to be as finely minced and doesn't need to be as carefully controlled temperature wise while you are cooking it because you're not worried about getting that just gentle sweat. You can afford a little bit of color around the edges. But it's the same basic ingredients. Carrot, celery, onion. Uh, I'll be adding some bell pepper, so I'm pulling mine into the... Oh, actually, you know what? Screw the carrot. Um, we're just gonna go with the bell pepper. We don't need the carrot. Um, carrot's always the my carrot is always the one that I least like preparing. And I've got a bell pepper right here. So that means we're pulling uh, into the Trinity, which is again the same concept, but from uh, Louisiana cooking. It occurs in both Creole and Cajun, and it is celery, onion, and bell pepper. Obviously, the Italian and French traditions could not use bell pepper traditionally because it's from the Americas, um, although they adopted peppers and tomatoes and such. Those are more recent traditions. Don't forget, prior to transatlantic trade, uh, there was no tomatoes in Italy. A fact that Makes you wonder what Italian food was like back then, and I, I, I don't know if I want to do a deep dive into historical cuisines, because there's already a channel that does that, and I strongly recommend you check it out, because I, th I really enjoy it. Um, he's also a much, much, much larger channel than me, and has never heard of me, so we're not friends. Um, Tasting History with Max Miller on YouTube does some really, really good work, does his research, and then he makes the dishes from the historical recipes. Some of them are weird. Some of them are weird. Things like 
there being no tomatoes in Italy. Oh, I got it. Brand new compost. Although it's already got melon scraps in it. Because I, uh, I got a whole melon. I wrote that on the Discord. I got a whole melon for a dollar. And it, I got a whole melon for a dollar because the whole melon was a little on the old side. So how's everyone's week been? Haven't seen anybody since Monday. Well, I've seen some of my IRL friends since Monday, but not you guys. Stressful, stressful week. And I, unfortunately, it is not something that I will be able to shrug off going into the weekend because it's, uh, it's not a work week related thing. It's just a life related thing and it hasn't been fixed. Oh, but I've been doing, in the meantime, in between, in between stressing out this week, I have been doing proper teaching of myself about um, some art programs. So hopefully I can manage to put together some improvements around here instead of just constantly talking about them, actually do them. Uh, let's pop over to the stove. You can see my lamb is cooking enough to the point where it's really rendering out a bunch of liquid and the brown is pushing up to the top. So we will get it. All stirred around so we can have a nice even browning. And so that the bits break up. We're not making a burger. We want this to be a Uh, mince. Although it's going to cook more later and that will help the little clumpy bits here break up a lot more. Um, I'm also going to give it a shot of salt. Ragu al beef short rib. That is a classic. Uh, also, hi, welcome in. Uh, we're going to let that continue to simmer away. Come back over here and do my... Where did I put the other half of my onion? Oh my god. <laughs> well, fortunately, it's a brand new bucket, so it's not creepy in there yet. Literally, literally threw it in my compost, it was sitting on the top. <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, well, fortunately, 
It is literally the first day of using the new compost bucket, so everything in there is still nice and fresh. I just put it in. <laughs> but that was... Hmm, how embarrassing. Um, uh, what you found in the freezer? Well, I found mine in the discount bin, although it's not dated for today, and it's one of the freshest I've gotten. I think they just don't sell it, so they put it... They're putting it on discount a day early. And we had a chilly day today uh, as well, so I want something that's nice and warm. I do have some things in the freezer that we've got to get back around to. Um, that's our Trinity. Oh, here. Let me show you this. I got a thing to show you. This is a red bell pepper. This is one red bell pepper. And it is the biggest, most mutant red bell pepper I think I've ever seen. And this wasn't an outlier. They had, they were all like this. They had a huge pile of them. They were all like this. And they were on super sale. Uh, I was not using this one today because I had a slightly older green one that we threw in here. But this is so big. And it's got this weird bottom to it. I don't know what, what they're doing with their peppers. <laughs> These days, oh, uh, that's unusual. It is currently the 23rd of February. Huh. Well, keep at it. Thanks for subscribing or wait till tomorrow next time. They are making some changes to how subs go through, so maybe they're, they screwed something up. Maybe they screwed something up. They've, they've made a few changes in relation to the PLUS program, which I am miles away from qualifying for, so we're not really talking or thinking about that around here. Um, but, it, but it has caused a few knock on changes with some other things and that might be impacting it although the prime stuff it was not supposed to interact with the plus program at all so i don't know i don't know okay the meat is all pretty much browned but not brown browned uh, Mags, hi! It's been a minute. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? From Monday, we have... Ooh, they... Wow, they look much diff more different now. So these are our three different styles of roast garlic from Monday. I saved them in a jar. These white ones are the ones I did in the microwave. The other two are the ones I roasted, and they've kind of both really turned a darker yellow as they've been sitting in the fridge, which is quite interesting. I was not expecting that. Uh, we're going to throw some of these in there because i got to use them up. Uh, we're also going to have some garlic powder, everyone's favorite, and some garlic, the fresh kind, garlic three ways. We could also maybe add some garlic. Now, there's going to be plenty of fat in this. I don't need to add any garlic oil. Um, uh, but yeah, it, very in, interesting change to the garlics. Um, the microwave ones have stayed super white. Wee former. Hi. Welcome, welcome. 
the microwave ones have stayed super white, although they're just they're still soft. They're still just like squishy soft. Um, whereas these yellow ones are the ones that were roasted in the foil in the classic way, and these slightly darker brown ones are the ones that were roasted in the little uh, pot. Uh, there's going to be garlic in the dinner, but the dinner we're having today is ragu di agnello. Agnello? Um, so then we're using some of my roast garlic from Monday, along with some other garlics. We're currently browning off the agnello, um, which is lamb. and getting the fat all rendered out of it because we will be using the lamb fat to cook all of our other elements here in the pan. Um, uh, so while they were browning, we were just getting stuff uh, ready on this side. Um, but hi, welcome, welcome. I've had a stressful week. I need something comforting. It's also been a very chilly day and I've been out all day. Um, so I need something warming. So we're doing both of those. Pasta is my uh, a big comfort food. Oh my God, Megs. Pressed the button. You pushed the button. Button? Button? Button. Um, subscribe to Prime. That's one of the... So I said I mentioned I've been trying to teach myself some uh, programs. I have I have an AVI copy of the entire uh, 1986 Transformers movie, and I want to clip from it. And I got to work out how to clip just an audio segment from an old film. Uh, uh, Megatron going Prime, so that it'll play that when people subscribe with Prime, because um, I thought that would be a really uh, cool. I thought that would be the best, the best thing. Oh, uh, oh, well, yours was stressful too. Well, stressful all around. Unfortunately for me, my Dressers are not related to it being the middle of the week, so I'm going to be just distressed tomorrow. Um, that's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to pull the meat out of its own juices so I can use those juices. And then we will re-add it afterwards. Um, um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not using them today because I don't have any, uh, sounds to be played, but I've got a pair of Bluetooth headphones, uh, earbuds that I can put in one ear and still hear here in the kitchen which is the reason that I have not been using the big headset all this time is because I couldn't hear anything and also it was too bulky. <laughs> the bits. Um, you're not allowed to be a fan of two things. We talked about this. You gotta pick one things. Okay, two fresh cloves. We're gonna cut the little root bits off. And crush them into this dish. And 
cut them into slightly smaller pieces so they fit in the pressure. For our fresh garlic element. My, the meat is starting to pop, which is a sign that I think I need to take it out. And if you're going to use a knife for this part, be very careful and be aware that it's bad for your knife. I recommend using a plastic scraper of some sort instead of a actual steel knife. Or if you're going to use a knife, make it a cheap knife. Like, oh, I, I've got cheap knives. I sh I've got some cheap crappy knives that I should have uh, used instead. Not that this knife is expensive, but it's one of my go-tos. And I'd rather not ruin it. <laughs> if possible. Um, you can't be a fan of many things. We've talked about this. We've talked about this. Rather, I've talked about this at you. Um, oh, and you were over there with the, the meat while I was crushing my garlic, but that's fine, but that's fine. Now we'll see if there actually was enough lamb fat or if I have to add in the olive oil. This is why you wouldn't add... I'm so confused why the, why the recipe would have me add olive oil first, then saute the lamb in the olive oil, and then drain off any excess fat. Just don't add the fat to begin with. I understand draining the excess fat because lamb can be fatty and you want to be able to control it, but why add more fat at the start when you're going to be rendering out the meat? It's just weird. Um, and we do need a little bit more in there, so it's fine. And I'm going to get a silicone spatula and scrape the sides down as well so that that stuff does not get all stuck crusty up up around the edges can get incorporated into the sauce in the bottom as we build it. Uh, our meat can be set aside. So Bookwoman's having this but with Beef ribs. Nobody else having, if anything. Maybe you're uh, on a diet. Maybe you're starving yourself. I'm not one to judge. Um... Saute our trinity with a pinch of salt. Oh, and an ad. And, and there's an ad on top of it all. Okay, while that's getting started, I will drag us back over 
here. Sushi Friday. That sounds mighty fine. Mighty fine. Uh, let's take out three cloves of one of each of our uh, roasted garlics. And also an equal measure of, well, not an equal because, well, I guess we are doing an equal because I spilled it slightly. So this stuff should be soft enough that I can smush it, yeah, like so. And you kind of, you kind of break it up. We're just kind of, we're just going to kind of chop and smash right here on the board. It's too gooey to put through a masher and it's too soft to like mince up. So you just kind of smush it with the flat of the blade. Um, and then we do a thing that you are absolutely not supposed to do and scrape off my board with the edge of my knife. Um, we even have a tool for this that is not a knife and I didn't use it. So there. Every Friday for 20 years, damn! I don't know that I've had the same thing every anything for any ever. Um, get out all of my little spice bowls here. These are not spice bowls. This is not what they're for. We are misusing them deliberately. Um, our, to our garlic powder, I'm going to add some onion powder, which looks almost identical. To this one, we're going to add some oregano, some, take the lid off, do it proper, basil, and we'll think if I need a third leaf. I kind of combine my things in that in that way. Um, our grinder here is going to have black pepper, which is getting very low. I need to pick up a new thing of black pepper. Fennel. Do I want anything else? What does this recipe... I'm not looking at the spices in this recipe. Um, this one wants rosemary and bay. I have some fresh rosemary. We can throw in some fresh rosemary. And I had just picked up some bay because we were out of bay. Um, well, uh, I'm... Prime should come through at some point. Um, I'm in no rush. If you're in a rush, then well, let me stop you, but I'm in no rush. I'm going to uh, manually, manually crush up the, uh, the seeds here. jump out the edges a little bit while I do this, but hand crushing your seedy spices gives you a much coarser 
result than doing it in the electric buzzer. Um, since we're talking about uh, Prime, I'll just throw out the general reminder that every channel is gives. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, it comes with a Prime Gaming subscription to any one Twitch channel of your choice. Uh, you do not have to use it here, but you probably should use it somewhere. Um, oh my god. And the, uh, the point has been rendered moot as WeFormer has thrown a gift sub at Bookwoman. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much to WeFormer. Um, uh, I appreciate it. I'm sure Bookwoman appreciates it. Let's get some of our things rolling up in here. We're going to throw the freshly crushed garlic in that bare spot I just made on the pan. Let it go until fragrant. We're going to throw in our roasted garlic. If you're using jarred garlic, garlic, those little mincies that come in the in the liquid, that's very similar to roast garlic, uh, except it's a lot saltier um, because the liquid is essentially a salt water. Um, so we'll let these guys get nice and garlicky, which only takes 30 seconds-ish. And then get it all nicely mixed in with the rest of it. Add our powders. powders will burn quite easily and they also will thicken up the liquids that we have in the bottom so you have to be careful when adding powders to something like this where you've got hot saute going on so they don't just drop to the bottom and immediately burn and then finally I'm gonna add my dry spices, which also have a risk of burning, although not the risk of sticking, in my experience at least. I'm sure you could make them do it if you wanted, if you tried. Um, and you can see the stickage happening in the bottom. Okay, I'm not worried about sticking. It's not ideal, but I'm not super worried about it. Because we are going to end up deglazing our pan. And then adding tomatoes, which are very liquidy and will form this into a sauce. And then I suppose we should think about the pasta element. Um, well, if you don't mind my asking, what kind of sushi are we going for? I always love hearing about the foods from the peanut gallery. Um, rosemary. I am actually going to cut a fresh rosemary from the front window. So I will continue the chatter. But I must walk away from the camera. Um, 
because uh, I like the idea of rosemary in this. And I have some ready to go up here. I think we're going to skip the bay because I'm not going to simmer this stuff long enough for it to be relevant. This rosemary is looking like a little bit like I may have let it die in the front window. Um, very tame sushi eaters. So, California rolls. We made sushi here one time. Um, I should do that again. I have some sushi grade fish in the freezer that I bought because it was cheap and available. Um, tuna, salmon, and tempura yam. That's not that tame. When you say tame, I think like California rolls and, and cook, cooked salmon cream cheese. American tame. Okay, we got some fresh ish. Well, it's freshly cut from the plant. The plant itself is seeming, looks a little bit less than fresh these days. Um, we're throwing that in there. I like the idea of some rosemary. Our stuff is sticking quite a lot. So it is time for the red wine. And my red wine on tap is a by Acacia Pinot Noir, which um, is, as always, just whatever was on the discount, since, because this is what I do with it. <laughs> so I'm not really buying top shelf wine for drinking, I'm buying whatever's available for uh, cooking. Any liquid will do this. You could do this with stock. You could do this with harder alcohols, uh, in, that, in which case it would boil much faster and you would have much less liquid left over. You could do it with plain old water if all you want is to make the stuff not stick to the bottom. Um, I don't think we're using a stock today. We should use uh, tomatoes. Which has, right on the top there, uh, the sales sticker. Because as always, as, as ever. Um, where's my... There it is. Everything, everything's discount. Everything's discount. That should be the theme. Fine dining based on all cheap discount crap. <laughs> uh, we have a diced tomato that is going to be my primary tomato element here. We're just going to use one can. Um, I don't want this to be a incredibly uh, tomato-y sauce. It's going to be a very meat-forward sauce. Um, so we need to cook these now. We need to simmer them long enough for the tomatoes to really start to break down. Um, and we can hit this with a, a masher to enhance to uh, speed that along, but they do need to cook a little bit to soften up to the point where we can mash them. 
And we're going to give it a shot of tomato paste as well. Fine dining on a dime. Oh my god. Um, this would be when I would add the bay leaf, which I have opted to forego. A uh, big old squirt of tomato paste. That's going to amp up our tomatoiness without ad adding a ton of extra tomato liquid. It does also need to be cooked off a bit. Uh, and needs to be stirred in a bit. And seeing as we have quite a bit of liquid, I'm also going to add our meat back in so it can join the simmer, get those drippings out of my bowl. And I'm going to have to add another liquid. And we so the recipe that I have as a reference wants me to add stock. And then we simmer this all together. And it thickens up. Because at the moment it's not very liquidy because the meat wants to grab onto all of that liquid from the tomatoes. And this will just be too thick and it won't have any convection and we'll get like little mud volcanoes going on in there. Um, frugal fine foods. Um, these are good suggestions. Drop these in the suggestions tab or I'll forget about them. Um, Let's see. I have a couple of options for a stock. All my stocks are stock concentrates. We have tomato chicken bullion. We have beef bullion. We have just plain old chicken bullion. We have some pork bullion. We don't have any lamb bullion. We also have mush. Ooh, maybe mushroom. Maybe mushroom is the way to go here. Mushroom is the way to go here because I can kill the mushroom because, uh, there's only that much left in it. Um, so, so that part was decided just by what was here. Uh, I'm gonna get some hot water from the tap running. because it'll help this stock paste dissolve. We're just gonna fill the jar with water, uh, put all my other stocks away since we're not using them. shake this over the sink because the uh, lid is probably not going to be super watertight. But then... Nope, there's the chunks. Add some mushroom stock concentrate to our thing here. Make it more of a soup, and then we will simmer it away. Oops. We will trip over my kitchen rug. Um, we're adding a we're adding some more liquid because I've got quite a bit of 
stuff. And I want this to sort of simmer like a soup and not immediately go to mud volcanoing. Do you know what I mean when I say mud volcanoing? Where you get that kind of blip, 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 and you get this just like little volcanoes come through the, the stuff because it's too thick, but not solid enough to just burn on the bottom. Well, I hate it because it makes a mess and it also burns my hands a lot. So we don't, we avoid that. Um, uh, so yeah, bring this guy back up to a simmer and he's going to simmer until he thickens, which we're going to speed up a little bit. Um, oh, you know what I was supposed to add? Um, no, I guess we aren't supposed to add that. I was going to say we add the cheese. Um, but no, I guess we're not supposed to add the cheese at this stage. We're just supposed to make this into a, a ragu. Um, so yeah. All the ingredients are in the pot. You know what I'm going to use this stuff for is softening up some bread. If we wanted to thicken this into a stew as well, because we, we could we could say screw the pasta part, because this would be served over pasta normally. We could say screw the pasta part. I have the breadcrumbs still here from uh, breading the bread balls on Monday. Um, if I just poured them in there, they would rapidly thicken this thing up and form like a really fancy version of that Civil War food. Um, which is called, which is called, which is called something. I can't remember the name of. Hellfired stew? Hellfire stew. Hellfire stew. Yep. Um, this is much too fancy for that. We we made ours first of all with lamb. Uh, we minced our vegetables up. We added a whole bunch of spices. Real hellfire stew is crudely chopped vegetables of whatever is available at the moment. A chunk of a pound of salt pork and a bunch of hardtack, and that's it. <laughs> it's um, no spices. Some salt. Well, not not even some salt. The salt comes from the salt pork. Uh, we made it. I made it once. It was actually pretty darn good. Unfortunately, it's not cheap survival food anymore because salt pork is not produced in large quantities like it used to be. <laughs> So the salt pork, ironically, is the is the expensive part. Um, it's cheaper to just buy fresh pork, and then you don't have to deal with extracting the salt. It's such a strange world we live in, where the the literal cheap peasant food of the past that didn't become fancy, it just became obsolete. So I stopped making it. So weird. Um, but I am gonna serve this over pasta. So I should get some water going for that. 
as well. And then there's going to be cheese added to it. Uh, and parsley. And I almost just put an empty pot on the stove, which is how you ruin pots. Um, I can show you what I did to the wok when I was cleaning it after Monday. Because I used it for frying on Monday, so there was a lot of oil in it. So then I had to clean it. Um, and then I didn't want it to sit wet, and I didn't want it to sit with loose oil in it, so I decided at that point to use the stove to, uh, you know, dry out the interior and, and toast up the remaining oil. Well, I did what you are absolutely never supposed to do, and I walked away. Um, and that's why my nice walk has developed a little ring. Now, I've already reused it and started redeveloping, but I burned off some of my... Um, really hard to hard to catch catch the you can see, sort of see that the lighter circle in the middle I burned off some of my seasoning um, doesn't hurt the metal the metal is perfectly fine um, but it's embarrassing because I, I I scorched off some of my seasoning so now I have to make stir fries and I've already done that um, but just some stir fries or some fried rice just you know things that are sort of generically oily and you do in a walk to rebuild that. Oh, that is the best way to build up the seasoning on your wok. It is simply to use it for the generic things that it's for. Um, avoid acidic foods because they will eat into your brand new seasoning. Avoid anything that really will stick because your seasoning isn't fully developed and things are more likely to stick and then you'll have to scrub it off which will damage your seasoning while it's supposed to be building up. Um, you're having spaghetti noodles. I am opting for fettuccine uh, because I think that this stuff is going to end up being thick enough to stick to the wide noodle. We're salting my water. Uh, I said simmer, but I'm going to actually let this continue at its pretty vigorous boil because I did add quite a bit of liquid to it and I want it to cook back down. But we also need to make sure that it doesn't stick at the bottom because at this point it would be very difficult to deglaze a really burnt on base. And scrape down the ring. Okay. We probably have another hour in us. So I gotta think of what else I wanna do. Cause this just has to simmer for a while. Um, honestly, we're probably too early on the noodles because this has to simmer for a while. Um, which is the danger of doing this type of cooking where it just needs to sort of sit and brottle. Um, oh, and an ad came up on us. Well, I don't really want to cook some other major thing at this stage. We can test out a, I will wait for the ad before I, I uh, you, you can see it, you can, you can see it in the, uh, the corner there, the part that's cut off on the main on the main angle. So 
something that I have wanted to try. Um, but as of Monday, I really wanted to try. Uh, we could do a dessert. What? Uh, pitch, pitch me an idea for a dessert. Coming up with recipes is uh, half the challenge. <coughs> hmm. We have pineapple, we have apple, apple. We could make pen pineapple, apple pen into a dessert somehow. Somehow. Cookies. Um, here's the thing. We'll talk about this for a sec. Iron Brew. The uh, orange drink from Scotland. Uh, so I got this in the international aisle at the Woodman's. And on Monday, I was there on Monday, um, I saw them. I'm like, oh. I'll try that sometime. And then while I was standing there thinking about them, somebody came in, said, oh, Iron Brew, and took all of them, cleared out the entire shelf into their cart and walked off. Um, so when I saw them back restocked today, I grabbed one. I didn't clear them out. I grabbed one. I guess I don't understand the mentality of clearing them out completely. It was weird. We're going to try it. I've never had Iron Brew. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's not orange flavored. And I've also heard that it's illegal in the U.S. thanks to one of the colorings. Um, and I'm sure this is the U.S. formula that has replaced that coloring with a U.S. approved coloring. Um... Oh my goodness, what is that smell? It certainly isn't orange. It smells like bubble gum. Tastes like bubble gum. Wow, it tastes like bubble gum. Why would they make it? Well, I suppose. I suppose Inca Cola. Tastes like bubble gum, and that's yellow. And that's yellow because the stuff they make it from is yellow. Or the stuff they originally made it from was yellow. Hmm. Bubble gum is not what I was expecting when I saw this. Uh, at all. Not the color, not the name, not the... the there's a little strong man in the middle of the, of the logo... Original and best, Iron Brew. It tastes like bubble gum. It tastes like, like, stereotypical classic bright pink bubble gum. It's not like it's subtly bubble gummy. It just tastes like, like, um, like hubba bubble. Weird. Not, not at all what I was expecting. Uh, I will say that. You've done it again, Scotland. You've surprised me. Huh. Well, if you've never had Inca Cola, which is from a place where the Incas used to live, I am not sure exactly what part of the Americas that is. Um, but that is also bubblegum flavor, but it's bright yellow. Huh. I don't hate it. I like Peru. Thank you. Um, you may be surprised to hear, since I am a bit of a foodie, I quite like these artificial sweet flavors. 
I don't like cotton candy, but I love cotton candy flavored things. Um, quite like this. It tastes like bubble gum. It tastes super artificial. I was just really surprised when I smelled it and then tasted it because it's certainly in America, uh, maybe it's not the same around the world, but in America, orange, bright orange like this is either citrus or it's sour. And this is neither of those things. It is candy sweet and a bubble gummy <laughs> or Ecuador. Um, I have an idea for a dessert, since you asked for a dessert. I've heard of this. So this stuff was famous for a, for a, quite a while in America. It's famous in Scotland because I guess it's their thing. It's really popular in Scotland and it's produced in Scotland. Um, it was famous in America because one of the colorings in it was banned in America. And it's always such a strange thing because America is much, much more lax about food additives than Europe. But it was just this one thing where the Americans had banned something. Um, and it has the uh, recycling. This is clearly made for American thing because it has the... Uh, all the state recycling things right there on it and a uh, standardized nutrition fact block. Hmm. Says it contains quinine as well, which is interesting. I'm not getting the bitterness of the quinine from the flavor at all. Um, but I have an idea for you from me. That was a strange way to phrase that. I have an idea. I have an idea. An idea I have. So I said, I have apple and I have pineapple juices, so I could make pen pineapple apple pen, which is a very outdated meme song at this point. But I could literally make a layered apple pineapple thing. Okay, we gotta we gotta think about how to the right way to do this. Because um, it needs to be boiled. It, it needs to be boiled, so I can't really use the plastic container and feel good about it. And I'm probably gonna need extra sugar because when you set a juice, it really mutes the flavors. It would be really cool if I could make it a side-by-side -side thing, but I don't have a good way to do that. Fortunately, we have lots of time for me to problem solve, to troubleshoot. I just have to occasionally come over and stir the uh, the ragu here. I'm 
I'm actually going to put a lid, the lid, on our sauce, but like slightly ajar so that it can still steam out. But if it thickens up and starts to splatter, it won't just it's everywhere. Um, okay. Okay. Um, dig out my jar of unmarked jar of white powder, our favorite, our favorite thing from the spice rack, the unmarked jar of white powder. If I was to say pen in the context of a dessert, what would spring to mind? Because I have the apple and I have the pineapple. And I can't just stick a pen in there, but we could maybe on a stick. I don't think we could do this on a stick. I don't think I, I don't think I have the logistics to accomplish such a thing. You're a baker. What would you bake if I said, I need a pen? Hmm. Anyways, um... We will start with... quarter teaspoon of our unmarked white powder. Everyone's favorite, unmarked white powder. <laughs> Look at me confused. Come on, that's no way to be a crazy, inventive, creative, uh, wild internet chef. Unmarked white powder half a cup of pineapple juice, and a tablespoon of sugar, and a whisk. Needs to be super dissolved. Which we don't have. There's too much sugar in there. Problem solved. Problem solved. Troubleshoot. Troubleshoot. Uh, the small pan. Where is my small pan? It needs to be scrubbed. Um, hands of the silver gel pen you mark fabric with. Well, that's not helpful. That's not what I need. This pan. Sewing. Oh. Okay. That needs to boil. So we are turning another burner on. And while that one is boiling, I am going to 
Do the same thing, but with Apple. So in Pen Pineapple Apple Pen, the pen is just a connector between the apple and the, the pineapple. If you're not, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a crazy meme song from like ten years ago or something. Um, from like the Gangnam Style era. It is super out of date. No one will know what I'm talking about unless they're a million years old, but not a billion years old, because those will be too old. Okay. Hopefully the acid in the pineapple does not cause this to not work. Um, the unmarked white powder that I have added these two is, of course, of course, our favorite, agar agar. Um, which is a vegan gelatin substitute derived from some kind of sea plant. that I greatly prefer to actual meat gelatin for having a nicer texture, for being much easier to work with. Um, and then it has a side benefit of being uh, uh, not meat. So you can make nice things out of it that aren't surprise full of meat uh, for your vegan friends. It's good stuff. I really like it. Um, it boiled over really, really fast. which I should have expected it was going to. Because the agar makes the liquid thicker, so it foams faster. Uh, I'm going to have to replace the trays on all these burners probably pretty soon um, I keep spilling things underneath there and then they burn in place and they just become impossible to clean um, yeah so yeah we're kind of making gummies except I'm not making like individual gummies. I hope that boiled long enough too. It, it came to a full boil obviously, but I don't know if that was quite long enough. We're gonna take this guy off of his uh, burner. Ooh. <laughs> There is boiling sugar underneath the burner. You can see it moving around in there. That's not good. In the words of Sonic the Hedgehog, that's no good. Um, that's going to be a nightmare to clean. I'm probably just going to have to throw that one away. Um, So we'll put that one in there next to the pineapple. We will hope 
that either of them work. Yeah, well, these, these catch trays have been aging badly because I don't take care of them properly. So it's not a case of, oh, I ruined it once and now I have to throw it away. It's a case of, I ruined it many, many times and it has caught up to me. Um, let's get out some pasta. Um, so here's the, the measure for, for pasta. Take your finger like this. You get your the tip of your index finger in the crook of your in the crook of your thumb, and the amount of pasta that fits through there is one serving for you. And I actually pulled out too much. I would love one of those flat glass top stoves. They are much easier to clean up. Fortunately, my landlord will not replace the stove. Uh, until unless this one literally completely breaks and will not function um, So that is not an option for me But I would love one of those I also would love it because the interior is is very old and crappy We have a very old and crappy uh, stove here Ah, uh, The joys of renting Our water's at a full boil, so I'm going to throw in our pasta. Um, yes, I have used the glass top. Um, the, oh God. My old, my old house, um, the old place I rented, just before I moved out, they, the previous owners sold the place, and the new owners honored to the end of the lease and then cleared everyone out. Uh, one of the last things they did was they replaced the stove. The stove, that old stove wasn't broken, but they got a brand new one uh, and put it in there as a selling point because then the house comes with a brand new stove. That house has been torn down. The house is no longer there. <laughs> the physical building is completely gone and it is now an empty lot full of weeds. And I'm wondering what happened to that stove. I would have loved to bring that stove with me and put it here because it was brand new. Um, um, I assume they didn't just trash the stove, but I don't know. Um, the rest of that house, and I... Having lived in that house for a number of years, um, tearing it down was the correct thing to do. I'm kind of surprised that the develop the, the the company that bought it, because they rent they initially rented it out, and then they, um, because there was somebody living there. I saw somebody else living there after after it had gotten work you know worked over um but having lived there i'm surprised anyone bought it at all it must have sold for peanuts um that house was not 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 real good Okay, our sauce is becoming noticeably less soupy. Although our tomatoes are still nice big chunks, so we I might just leave that I might just leave the tomatoes as is. Um, um but yeah, I also am not I don't know when it was torn down. I honestly don't know. I I wasn't paying attention. I don't go over that way very often since I don't live there anymore. 
um, I wasn't paying attention. It was just one day I was in the area and I, like, I was like one block over for unrelated reasons. And it was just like, oh, I'll just go over and see how the old house, you know, swing by the old house. And it was gone, completely gone. No sign of the foundations, just vanished. Um, Cairo, bonsoir. Hello, welcome, welcome. Um, we're uh, taking a little bit of chit chat because things are boiling away. I can show you what we've got. This is our ragu di agnello, uh, for which I kind of followed the recipe, and I kind of just threw stuff at it until it sounded good. Um, so it's lamb mince, bell pepper, celery, onion, tomato, black pepper, fennel, basil, oregano, Three different kinds of garlic, uh, onion powder, salt, uh, mushroom stock. That's what was in there. Um, I'm going to scrape the sides down a little bit as it, as it reduces, some of it sticks to the sides. Um, that's what's going on here in the pot, and I've just had the lid sort of cocked on it to prevent it from splattering around on us. Um, fettuccine coming up in the back pot over here, and we just did a experimental dessert that needs to set up. They're still looking very liquidy. I don't know if they're going to set up. They didn't boil for very long. Um, a an apple agar and a pineapple agar that I'm going to stick together. Um, hopefully they stick together. I'm a little worried that they're too acidic to set properly, especially the pineapple. So we might just end up with a little dish of sweetened pineapple juice and a little dish of sweetened apple juice. Um, that is definitely a possibility. A possibility, if you will. Uh, it is looking really good. It's getting that... Um, it's, I have to stir it to see the, the bits, but the surface is getting that, like, floating oil look to it. I think we might add a little bit of starch. Depending on how much, thicken, how much more it thickens, we might add a little bit of starch to it. To kind of, you know. You know, you know, stick it together. Um, so yeah, and then things are just kind of simmering away. We, we former wanted a dessert, and I ended up with probably the furthest thing from what was in, uh, in their head. We were talking about baking, and then I ended up making fruit gummies. Um, I should get a gummy mold, like a, like one of those, uh, you know, silicone tray with all the little shapes in it. I can, then I can make, I can make little fruit gummies. That might be good. That might be fun. That might be a fun thing to do. Um, whoa, the ad snuck up on me, as always. There's the ad. But we are just kind of standing around for a hot minute here because the sauce is not quite as thick as I want it to be. Uh, we have a lot of dripping on this burner in the front, so I'm going to turn that on real quick, burn that off, watch the smoke. Nice. You can't. You can hardly see the smoke because the steam coming off the pot in front of it. But that uh, back left burner there is uh, smoking.
we are going to, you know what we're going to need? We're going to need a this pan. We're going to need this pan, and we're going to need it on the front burner, and we're going to need to move that guy to the back. So, you off, you off. Back burner on medium. Slide the pot back there, and I'm actually going to kick it up to a seven on my dial. Because uh, this guy is going to want to be in the front. Because we're going to have to do a... Uh, yeah, well, the sugar's underneath. The sugar's not on top of the coil. The sugar got underneath. Uh, and it's already burned in place. It's not going to get any worse. I'm going to have to pull that, uh, that thing out of there either way. Look, it's res it's resigned to its fate. Um, it was never going to get cleaned after after that sp spill got in it. Uh, we're just going to burn it off. Um, we should test our pasta to make sure I'm not overcooking it. Um, so here, let me show you the trick. There's a trick. There's a trick to testing your pasta uh, for doneness. You uh, you fish a noodle out like this, and then you go. Mm. And if you think it's done, then it's done. This has been my TED Talk. Okay, I put that there because we're doing this the right way. Where's my scooper? So, front burner on. Stir this up so you get a nice cross section of it. That guy off. Take a good scoop of your sauce. Lid back on. He should start bubbling pretty quick. No, the the, tr the trick to testing your pasta is just to just to taste your pasta. Um, we take our noodles directly from our water. Now, if you throw pasta at the wall, you waste the pasta. I know that's that's like the old trick, but it's. It doesn't hold up to thinking about it at all. Um, this right here is why I don't like having a non-stick large pot, because then I can't scrape the tongs against it to get the... Uh, Uh, last few noodles out. And we put just a dash of our pasta water in there. And likewise, we have a steel pan for this. So that I can really get in there and 
drape it around. And we are finishing our pasta. So I pulled it when it was just a little bit chewy still. Um, and we're putting it in a hot pan with some of our sauce. And then we are going to go for the old French method of finishing our sauce. A pat of butter. A bunch of parsley. Which I should have gotten out a little bit ago. Because all the green things we put in there have long since cooked down to reddish brown. Um, so having something that's a much fresher green. So the, the putting the butter in the sauce at the end like that is a French thing. Uh, it has a French name, but it's in English. It translates to something like mounting the sauce. And it gives you kind of like a, a nice glossy finish on your sauce uh, that you don't, and, we'll, and I let it sit too long. That's okay, I can. There's another reason to use steel on steel, so you can, when you uh, should have cut your parsley earlier and you turn your back on it, and the noodles stick a bit. I think I'm going to give it just a little bit more of our sauce. Which is also running a tad, tad bit hot. I'm going to turn that completely off back there. So now I'm just going to scrape it through and make sure we don't have anybody sticking to the bottom. That is a finished monture à bleu. French words. Get this out of the pan before anything re-sticks. I'm not going to bother with the old pasta nest. I like a I like a mound. To do a pasta nest, you would get a carving fork, put it in the pasta, and do like a twirl. But it has to be like a long fork because you want to get a full serving. Yeah, not worth it. Um, uh, and that is almost finished. It needs. Parsley is a little bit wilty. It needs garnish. 
and it needs a cheese. Which I just need to open a brand new cheese. Um, The recipe recommended uh, a Pecorino Romano. As a pairing with the lamb sauce. This is an American Romano. So, you know, probably wrong. Mm, but it's real tasty. I suppose this makes sense too, because lamb is a more assertive flavor, so you want a more assertive cheese. Romano has a stronger nutty flavor compared to Parmesan. Okay. Get out a bag to put that in. So here's a here's a trick I've learned. It's basic, and it makes sense if you think about it, but I didn't think about it for a long time. Leave the plastic on your cheese, and don't touch the exposed end at all. Only touch the plastic, so that you don't get little bacterial colonies from your hand on the directly on the cheese. It makes your cheese mold faster. It doesn't, it won't prevent your cheese from molding by doing it this way, but at least you're not going out of your way to expose it to little extra bits. Um, just a, uh, a little tip. That is, if your cheese comes in plastic. If your cheese comes in wax, then do the same thing, but with the wax. I'm uh, cleaning up the edge a little bit. Okay, let me go take a picture of this. It's nothing fancy. But, or is it? Or is it? Could be. It could be. Where'd I put my phone? There we are. This new phone has been... Wonderful for the food photos. It's so much easier to handle than the tablet. Okay. We'll come back, we'll give it a taste. And then we'll check in on our gummies. Who are? Ooh, the pineapple actually is almost set. Okay, good sign. Good sign. Good sign. Good sign. This is a this is a large serving. <laughs> Make sure to get our sauce up in there. Mmm. 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 It's hot. Okay, that is. Oh, it's very in it's very interesting. It's um so it comes through kind of as you'd expect with a bolognese, although it's not it's not quite a bolognese. We're definitely more on the side of a ragu compared to a, a bolognese, which is even even meatier than this. Um, uh, so the, for the first thing is it comes through as sort of that 
greasy meat sauce, but the fact that it's lamb, that slight gaminess of the lamb sort of cuts through. Whereas if I was pork or beef, I think it would disappear. It would fade into the, the mix. It is a bit greasy. And I think we could fix that if I did what I said and I added a little bit of starch just to kind of, you know, seize up the uh, excess oils that were in there. We could have accomplished that. Um, I almost. I almost think we should add just a roux at the start. I don't think it's the extra butter. Extra butter at the end typically doesn't make something greasy. Um, I just think because lamb is a rather oily meat to begin with. Because um, also that was just one little pat of butter. Um, I don't know. It's not bugging me. It's not like... It's not like there's a pool of grease. If I pull this back, there's a there's a schmear on the on the plate, but there's not like a puddle down there. We don't have a it's not swimming in it. It's just I suppose that means it's the right amount because it's greasy, but it's coating the noodles. It's sticking to the noodles and not pooling at the bottom. So that is that means we don't have excess. We have just the right amount for sort of a fatty, rich. I did not drain the meat. What I did at the start was I did not add any fat to the pan before I added the meat. I only used the fat from rendering the meat in the pan to start it off. Because lamb is fatty, and I didn't want to add fat and then have to drain off the tasty lamb fat. But again, I it, it it it's a it has a little bit of that greasiness to it, but it's not like it's overwhelming, and we don't have a pool forming. It's just a well, yeah, maybe a maybe a smidge, maybe a smidge, maybe the extra butter was just. Just a smidge too much, a smidge too decadent, a smidge too rich. I'm going to say smidge a few more times until it loses meaning. It's delicious. It's very tasty. I really like how the lamb, the gaminess of the lamb sort of cuts through and you can you can tell what meat is in there compared to if I did this with, say, pork, where it would just have vanished. Um, if you did this with veal, the veal would just have vanished, although it would have given you this sort of greasy, this greasy uh, character, because veal is very, very mild in flavor. Um, I think this, now we used mints. I think this, with a whole piece of lamb that you cooked until it just fell apart, and then you built the sauce around that as the main, or cooked the cooked a whole piece of lamb into the sauce until it just disintegrated, which would have taken all day, uh, or cheating with the pressure cooker. That I think would be a, a real delight. We might do something. I'm trying to think of what we'll do for Easter. I missed Valentine's Day completely. Blew my blew my uh, mind. Uh, I missed Valentine's Day. I'm trying to think what we're gonna do for Easter. It's either gonna I think be lamb because I've been seeing lamb recently and it's been more affordable, which is weird to me. Or if I can find it, rabbit. Um, if we do lamb, we could do a sort of slow stewed thing out of it and just be here all day. I got I got a chair. <laughs> Tangent. I got a chair that is the right height to use the kitchen countertop. I can put it here 
and sit here and I can reach the kitchen countertop from a chair so I could slide you guys over a little bit and do something other than cooking in the space here. Um, there's the chair. Uh, it's not much of a chair. It's like a tall stool with a back on it. Um, but I'm trying to, I keep saying I do need to do things other than cooking. Problem is my setup is here in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's check in. This is gonna be, this is gonna keep just fine. Let's check in on our fruit gummies. There's our pineapple. Ooh, and our apple ha seems to have not quite set. It's very jiggly, but it doesn't pour out. The pineapple is much more of a gummy and uh, How do I want to serve these? Um, pastry knife. Do I have a weird plate I can put these on? The pineapple is sturdy enough that I think it's going to end up being the bottom. I hope the apple isn't liquid in the middle still. Uh, but this is another feature I like about agar. It sets so much faster than than um, animal gelatin. Um, in addition to being easier to work with and having a nicer texture, it's already set. Um, serve it. Serve it on a ginkgo leaf. I'm going to serve it on a ginkgo leaf. By the way, I have ginkgo leaf plates. Um, I don't know if you know that about, about me. I don't know if you know that, but I got a set of ginkgo leaf plates. <laughs> um... So let's get this guy out of here. The pineapple one is definitely looks fully set. We just have to be careful not to chew it up while we're getting it released. It's nice and clear, too. I've had issues in the past with agar getting really cloudy. The apple was already cloudy. Now I have to get in there and get under it. It doesn't want to... The apple was, was already cloudy, but look at how clear the pineapple came out. Nice and jello-y. Okay, the apple. It's jigglier. Those bubbles have set in place as well, which is unfortunate. I didn't tap the bubbles out quite as well. It also has a little bit more sediment in it because it's apple cider, so it has little bits of solids in it. Ooh, it's gooby. It's glooby. It's glooby. It broke. Oh no, it broke. I broke it. It's dissolving. It's falling apart. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we didn't quite get the apple one to work. 
but I can salvage It probably just needed to be in there longer, and I'm being impatient about it. You're supposed to let these things set for an hour. I know that they set faster than that, but that's like the safety time. Clearly I needed the safety time this time. Um, it doesn't look bad, actually, with the, uh, with the little chunks. Kind of awkwardly serving this on a ginkgo leaf is also maybe not the uh, the best the best decision, but here we are. Well, the pineapple one worked great, and it's really clear, which I think honestly makes it look almost nice with the cloudy apple around it. I'm surprised the pineapple one didn't um, uh, break the gel. I need more experiments with agar. Stuff is fun to work with. Um, do I want a something on the top as like a little finishing garnish? No. Maybe? No. Um... I guess I'll go, uh, I wonder why the apple one, I mean, it, it's, it's pro literally probably just the time it took to, uh, the difference in the time, the setting times. That's probably it. Well, I hope it looks okay in the pictures. It honestly looks pretty cool in person because the pineapple is so clear. Okay. Oops. Accidentally took another picture. Extra picture, but of nothing because I had set the phone down. Um, bringing it back. I guess we'll taste this guy now. With a fresh spoon. So I am curious to taste the pineapple part. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, it's really nice. Oh, it's really nice. It tastes like pineapple juice, like solid pineapple juice, but it's set just enough that it like dissolves back into juice in your mouth. That's the perfect the perfect set level. The apple one. The apple flavor is less pronounced, less strong. Still tastes like apple. It actually dissolves less quickly in my mouth, which is strange to me, since it's the one that's much less set in the physical world. I think I just implied that the inside of my mouth is not the physical world, but... Uh, and then we'll have a scoop of one of each. Mmm. The pineapple just dissolves right back into juice in your mouth, which is really interesting and nice. This is a bit of a mess. It's, it's tasty. I like it. It's a fruit. It's like a fruit. Yellow, but posh. This is, I think, one of the 
I'm gonna mark this as one of the few agar successes, like outright successes. The pineapple one. The apple one should have been left in longer to set. Um, the pineapple one is so exactly what I had in my head when I started that, that it's spooky. Um, huh. Well, there you go. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> just had a th I just I just had a thought. I just we can't do it today. We can't do it today at this point. But I just had a thought. What if I made an agar egg? Like set egg white or a set white and like a bright yellow something in the middle. Maybe. Well, think about it. Um, I love playing with agar. Um, and I'm just not creative enough to like make the the things out of it. I love how clear the pineapple came out. Mm. And actually, they go really well together because the pineapple one is so tropical pineapple forward, whereas the apple one has a much more subtle flavor, but it's really juicy. So together, you've got a mouthful that's like tropical juice. I hope I'm explaining that. I don't know that I've explained that very well. Um... Well, that's my thing. There's the weird dessert. <laughs> you know what I almost did? When you said that, and I was thinking about what I could do, I almost took the iron brew and made that into an agar puck. Um, I just think that that would be way too acidic. Um, it's an interesting dessert. Um, from just looking at what I had that was sweet and making something... It worked surprisingly well. Um, so yeah, I am glad you mentioned, you said dessert, because I think we got a fun dessert out of it. Um, my plating, I think, leaves something to be desired. Because my apple pff, disintegrated on me. Um, because I was impatient, because we were impatient. Uh, speaking of being impatient, we just had an ad break, but I, uh, which I should have skipped, because I knew we were going to be wrapping up. Um, so, welcome back to the main, the main page with my, my hair gets more mad scientist-y by the day. Um, let's see who is on. Who I can drop you folks on. Well, you know we former's not on, because you're here. Um... Let's give an old mute and give a check on a couple of channels. No one's running an ad. We can go see Yed. Yed's doing more crowd control stuff. We saw Lee shot us last time. Um... Tug after hours. I don't think I even follow Tug. Tug. Oh. Oh. Last epoch. Sure. I've never raided Tug. I watch Tug in the mornings on his main. On his main line thing, but I've never caught his after hours, and I've never had a chance to rate him because he his main channel's on in the morning. So let's go say hi to Tug After Hours, better known as Tugboat. Um, the man with the golden voice. Uh, he plays games. He plays a lot of 
sort of chill, cozy games in the mornings. I don't know what he plays in the evenings. I just know that the evening shows are supposed to be adult themed. Because his main channel is very is is is, is f all fun for the whole family. Um, there you go. We former knows swears on the evening shows. Well. Let's all go say hi to Tug. And if you like what you hear, he's also got a morning show on a different channel, um, which I'm sure he would be happy to direct you to as well. Um, I swear, I don't swear on the channel, except I think when I screw something up. But um, I am going to be busy all weekend applying for jobs. Um, <laughs> Uh, so definitely no streams this weekend from me. I'm going to hopefully find some time to work on channel stuff in between those. Um, so I will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Love you. Bye. Let me push. Stop.